from our fan studio, secured by DFWSecurity.com, you're rolling with the G-Bang Nation on 105.3 The Fan. Here we go. It is our one G-Bag Nation here on a fabulous Friday. A what you drinking, what you thinking Friday. Your calls will be welcome coming up at 520 if you are cracking them early in the day. Yes, and I'm talking to you, Rodeo Ron. Uh, you might <laughs> want to set an alarm on your phone because you know how time can get away from you. Yeah. When you're, when you're having a good time on a Friday. Salute to you for joining us. Uh, there he is. Brian brought us. The uh, former Cowboy Scout NFL Executive Emmy Award winner, number one influencer on Cowboys social media. You have Lucius Alexander in the Pimp Cup over there at Master Control, preparing for five hours of flawless radio producing, hosting, and engineering. LA Live coming up 540. You got Woolchuck and Shea Follow. You have Carter Freeman coordinating your video. And along with me, Gavin Dawson, we are the G Back Nation here on the fan. Uh, happy Friday, guys. We've done it again. We've done it. How about We've that? made it to the end of the week. Happy, happy Friday, Friday, fellas. Another seven days in the books, and uh, NCAA tournament round one continues. What an exciting night of action. Uh, we had the Mavs in action as well. We're going to talk about it. San Diego State leads UAB. It's 35-29. They just got it away in the second half. Western Kentucky leads Marquette 43-36. That game is at halftime. A couple of finals from earlier. Congrats to Bella, as uh, Matt Mosley would call him. In 92-67, they beat Colgate. And Northwestern uh, took down Florida Atlantic in uh, OT 77-65. Man, we were talking about Kentucky in action and uh, and how passionate their fans are. How Will Chambers, you know, is just a sight to behold. So they lose last night to Oakland. <laughs> and, and now fans want Calipari fired. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we should get Chambers on, get his take on this. I can't imagine being so frustrated I'd want to fire one of the great coaches. But hey. No, but I mean, the last three years, they, I mean, I think if you go back even four, they missed the tournament. Six. They lost in the first round, losing the second round, losing the first round. So the success has not been there as of late. But I'm with you. I mean, in terms of the lack of now great college basketball names that are available as coaches, because I think that's what Kentucky's all about. Like, they're not just going to fire Coach Cal and hire the next great assistant. They've got to go get a name to solidify that fan base. I don't think Coach Cal's job's in jeopardy, but he's got to do some reevaluating. You know, the whole diaper dandy deal, we're just going to get these one and done kids. It worked for one championship. But certainly now, I mean, he made the point post game. They lost to a club that had a bunch of 24-year-olds, right? So maybe he needs to do a better job in the transfer portal, add a little bit of veteran leadership on that team mixed in with some of their five-star freshmen that they're able to recruit. Man, that Dillingham, though, that kid's a freshman, a hell of a player that he has. So I can I can understand, you know, maybe Kentucky's not what they once were, but you're right about that. They can't just go out. That that's a that for that AD, that is a hard Thing. I mean, you look at Kentucky's program, their football program got, you know, yeah. better too. Uh, Certainly has. They've been putting out Mark some good Stoops, talents. Uh, remember, I mean, he was up for the Texas A&M job. Yeah. And kind of turned his turned his back on that one. But yeah, that, that Kentucky, that's a whole different animal that you're dealing with right there. But the, the young players, they are... Well, Cal, Cal kind of threw his team under the bus a little bit last night, too. Yeah, yeah, he uh, absolutely the post did. Game, you know, he was like, hey, you know, I thought they were ready. And College coaches are great at that. Oh, no. They, I think they're the best yeah. in, in any line of work at finger pointing. Uh, they can just blame. Like, kids. you know, they're 18. They're like, yeah. guys, they're 18. Yeah. You know, we, we, we prepped them, and our, our strategy was amazing. Yeah. Our, our film was, was we were flawless. Ready to play. The drills I had them doing in yeah. practice were insane. I, yeah. I had the best pregame speech that I can remember having or hearing. And these guys just didn't show up, man. They're young. We yeah. couldn't account for the big Fortnite tournament they were playing last night in the hotel lobby. Couldn't handle it. Couldn't handle it. $34 million buyout, though, for Calipari. So That's if they insane. wanted to do it, they're going to have to, they're going to have to write. A fatty, fatty boom body get it done. But, yeah, I don't see that happening. It's just tough because, as you mentioned, now with the transfer portal and guys staying longer in NIL yeah. and guys being willing to say, especially in basketball, where like a lot of these dudes aren't going anywhere close to the NBA. Like, why wouldn't you stay four or five years in college when you can be when you can be making some money playing basketball and then all of a sudden now Calipari's got a bunch of 18- and 19-year-olds versus grown men. And it's a, it's a different deal. And you basically have like a year to get your team prepped. You know, you don't have any of this. We're building up, building up, building up. I met these guys, you know, last spring, and now we're trying to go for it right now. This is all the time we have together. 
Yeah, I think this is what we're going to see, the demise of the G League. Because all these kids can now stay in and and get NIL money, and they don't they can just stay. Well, this school. year, a lot of the top prospects still went G League, yeah, which is I, interesting to me, Brian. And yeah. maybe you're right, but in, at least right now, they're choosing the coaching and the draft preparation over the bag in college. I to, to me, you you some of these guys can make so much money staying in college. Yeah, that it might be worth it now. How do you especially nav- if you're a late first? Or how around. do you navigate getting your 24 hours? You know the, that you have to have for the year, the 12 each semester to stay eligible. Yeah, but a couple of yoga classes. They got a plan for you. It doesn't. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't seem like that's the case. But yeah, I, I you're starting to hear some whispers about the G League and the NIL, and that maybe that we'll have players staying a little bit longer in college. Yeah, I think there's one G League squad that we've already heard and coming back next year. Uh, I think CBS Sports had that today. So you're right. Uh, that that could be definitely something. I felt bad. Coach Spinelli texted me last night. I was telling Gavin this uh, earlier. Sent me a screenshot. He had told one of his coaching buddies, Oakland's going to upset Kentucky. And he sent me that. He's like, F, man, I wish I had been able to get on yesterday. I'm sorry about that. I was like, it's okay, coach. But, hell, that was a great call. Yeah, yeah, yeah no doubt, man. Um, and we, uh, we'll we we'll effort to get coach on. It, you know, just kind of fell through with technical difficulties last night on, on his bus. He sounded like he was out in a West Texas uh, field somewhere. Uh, 682, Gavin, what's the difference with that situation to the Cowboys? It ain't about regular season wins, right? Well, I mean, they did win a championship, uh, what, 10, 12 years ago under Calipari, um, and they've gotten closer than the Cowboys have several times. So, I mean, specifically that. But I think what Chief said about the name, image, likeness, evening the playing field is very significant here. And it's tough for fans of Bama, Kentucky, traditional powerhouse programs, yeah. because there's nothing wrong with you. The system just changed. The meta changed of the uh, of, you know varying factors that contribute to the full picture that makes you a successful program. And it used to be culture, history, great coaches, and you had a system like John Wooden did through his boosters of getting the best players, right? And under the old rules, you sort of towed the line and had a cult-like atmosphere on your campus so nobody ever told on you, and everything was cool as long as you know reporters didn't come poking their noses around. Well, those rules changed, and now that everything is on the up and up, no universities are scared to pay players now. Nope. You used to benefit from that if you were willing to do it and had a great system. That was the game. Now the game has changed. So is that Calipari's fault? Maybe. You know, may- maybe Calipari just does not know how to build a program, and that's something you would have to consider. But I, I don't, I don't know if moving on from him is going to leave you in a better place. I don't think Bama thinks they're in a better place right now, Brian. No, I kind of feel like that these coaches, especially the guys that are older, are going to have to adapt adapt or die you know and that's kind of where i think cal's at right now he's going to have to adapt to how this game now works and uh so we'll see well speaking of adapting to how a game works how about the maps holding another team under a hundo last night developing trend they're attacking the hoop 18 dunks 62 points in the paint and it helps them on defense if they're not shooting as many threes they still did take 32 but this storyline that they can miss a bunch of threes, still figure out a way to win the game, is alive. And it's it's fun. They're 41-29 and 29 now, tied for sixth, guys. Yeah, man, it was, uh, it was good to see them uh, do what they did last night for sure. They continue to win without hitting the three ball, as you mentioned. I'm now starting to – that was like a notch on the belt, and now I'm like, okay, where's the three-point shooting? It's becoming a little bit too much of a trend yeah, of like, okay, yeah. this three point shooting is now. Win without it's it, actually, it's actually like <laughs> you get it back. You could definitely beat the Jazz without it, and that's awesome. And you can beat the Spurs without it, and that's awesome. But all of a sudden, you're gonna have to start knocking down some shots. I'm looking at you, PJ Washington. Every yeah. time he takes a corner three, I close my eyes. It's bad, and right um, and I often think about just just changing the channel in its entirety. But defensively, he's he's getting it done, and a lot of these guys are right now. So the 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 dunk, you know, we said this is Lob City, uh, the new Lob City, if you will. I mean, the amount of dunks last night, it was it was a dunk show. I believe almost half of their made buckets were dunks. Dang. It was just coming from all over the Lob place, City baby, and it is it is truly and just an entertaining team to watch. When you get when you have a Luca and a Kyrie doing what they do, and then you have the athleticism of Gafford and Lively, 
and and just just catching bombs all over the place, dunking it. It is and, and the passes that Luke is making, the alley oop to Kyrie. Oh my gosh! And the slow mo. Did you see the slow mo of it? Oh, where you just see all the fans and everybody's face and Luca's face, like as he passed it, uh-huh. and you start to see the smile yeah. on Luca's face before anything even happens. That was uh, that was the, obviously the play of the but night. You got Luca the energy. I mean, he's diving on the floor, yeah. hustling for loose balls. But you mentioned PJ Washington. Yeah, I mean the offense. I get it. But this is the second game in a row. Lori Marketing when he was defended by PJ Washington. Shout out to Noah Weber who put this out there. Sixteen point seven percent from the fleet field. He was yeah, one of six shooting. Lori and Marketing was bad. Did that again. Uh, he did that to Wemby the other night as well. So PJ yeah. Washington's become like, all right, this is the guy we can put on the opposing team's best offensive player, and he's going to do a good job. And neutralizing them, so yeah, you're not getting it offensively, but yeah. defensively, he's made a massive impact. Yeah, him, him and Maxi both. They're just throwing. They just it, a Markinen or a Wemby. You're going to get a little taste of Cleveland, a little taste of Washington, and yeah. both of them are getting it done. Yeah, but you got to do something about your Tim Hardaway. Yeah, I tried, man. First half of the season, we were working on it. Uh, but this is why when people are like, oh, "I don't think you can trade Tim," look at how well he. No, no, you know this is going to happen with THJ. He'll yeah. give you a good month or two, and then he's going to go quiet. Now, maybe in the playoffs, he'll, he'll come up with a big 30-point game here and there, get a little hot. But uh, overall, THJ is a player that you need to try and remove from your basketball team. It's rough, and uh, you know, ho- hopefully we'll, we'll get to a solution on that because I just feel like he's also a progress stopper, and you know, he's that's taking other was, guys off the court. I was, yeah. getting, I was getting to right there. And it's, it's, it's an attractive option to keep playing him because when the shooting is going, it helps you. But the lack of defense, the lack of passing, it's it's just he, he's not. I don't think he's a player on a winning playoff team. No, he can't be on your. He can't no. be in your rotation. No. Well, congrats to Bang Bang. He is going to be in the Rangers lineup opening day. He's done it. Um, our, our 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 rookie Wyatt Langford, who somehow overshadowed what Evan Carter did last year, as we get ready to play this season, just makes you so dang excited. But we got that news earlier this afternoon. Mike McCarthy's at Michigan Pro Day. Would you like him to get any players off their team this go around, Brian? Got a couple. They got a linebacker you need to look at, Colston. And a and nickel then, corner. And a corner, too. So, yeah, a really good little nickel corner as well. I I, I wonder if he's up there with Mike. Mike's probably just traveling around. He's probably not. He was at Notre Dame yesterday. Yeah. you. Would, so he's making, yeah, he's definitely you're making just, the rounds just out trying, there. They're trying to hit him all the top schools. You would say, oh, is he up there looking at Blake Corum? You know, is he up there looking, you know, and you're probably like, no, he's just probably going around because that's what coaches do this time of year. But, heck, I mean, Michigan had 18 invites to the scouting combine. Yep. So there's definitely a lot of good talent to watch there. Yep. Okay, USA and Jamaica last night, AT&T Stadium. What a treat for the USA fans that were there as they get the equalizer on an own goal in stoppage time. Almost lost to Jamaica. Then you get two goals in the extra sessions. Uh, both assisted by Gio Reyna to Haji Wright. Excellent by both players. Coming off the bench? Yes. Uh, Reyna somehow still not starting. Uh, yeah. If if Reyna does not play in the World Cup this go around and Greg Beerhalter remains the coach, I will riot. You know, if they have a game here, I'll one be, man riot. Yeah. Now I'm not going to break anybody's property, but I'll, I'll like tear up my own stuff outside of whatever stadium they happen to play at. This dude Reyna is a freaking wizard. You know, uh, and he comes on in, in, in you know in the first half. I think after a yellow card to the right back, all of a sudden he's in the middle and just dicing through the defense and then having the vision under pressure to slide. Perfect passes to Haji Wright. I don't know if any other player on the team makes these plays, but somehow Beerhalter and Reina's dad are in like a youth sports peeing contest between the coach and the best, well, one of the best midfielders. You know, Ooh. you have McKinney, you have Tyler Adams, you have a lot of good players, but nobody is is Luca like Reina is. Big guy, great handle, holds people off and is just looking the entire time. Do I break you down with the dribble? Do I hit the killer pass right now? And, you know, last night I I think should be the last time if that dude is healthy. He is not heavily featured and a major emphasis of the attack in the starting 11. I hope it's not too late to fire Beerhalter. If I'm at the, the Soccer Federation today, I'm like, guys, are we moving on from Beerhalter or do we just bring him in here and demand that Rain is in the 11 no Didn't matter what and doesn't come off the field? Yeah, we after the World Cup, he we, almost, yeah. We brought him back. He right? was just like yeah. suspended, or he was just like. He was in limbo. He was Jason Garrett. Yes. And then they decided after the search they weren't going to replace they him. They find a guy, yeah. So, soccer fans, hey, we got USA-Mexico Sunday night, 8-15 at the stadium in the final. It's going to be an exciting weekend. We got a run. G-Bag of the Day is coming up at 2.30.
mixed bag with Woolchucks next in the nation.
Yeah, buddy, welcome back, nation. Segments brought to you by the Frankels. Life is unpredictable. Accidents happen. Frankel and Frankel, the go-to attorneys for car and truck wrecks in DFW. If you or a loved one is hurt in an accident, contact the Frankels for a free consultation, 214 or 817-333-3333. Here's Wolchuk with your mixed bag. Marquette making a run here. They're tied it up against Western Kentucky. That was a big upset alert, 48 all. Have- must have found a way to get uh, Butch Lee and Bo Ellis on the court yeah. there from the Boy, that 17. would be a bracket buster. I know Marquette was a sexy Final Four pick. They've been really good this year outside of playing UConn. But Western Kentucky had a Conference USA. Conference USA, we had it with FAU last year on North Texas a couple years ago, beat Purdue, won their first ever conference champion or uh, NCAA tournament game mm-hmm. in school history. So Conference USA is on a run here with first-round upsets. So... Marquette, not out of the woods yet, but yesterday, we talked about it in the open, big-time upset, Oakland knocking off Kentucky, two-time national champion Jay Wright was on the broadcast set there for TNT and TBS, and Jay Wright dropping the mic on the state of Coach Calipari at Kentucky. Here's what the former national championship coach had to say. Number one, personally for Cal. He he loves Pittsburgh. He takes pride in being a Pittsburgh guy. So being there in Pittsburgh, this really hurts him personally. I understand. I feel for him. Number two, the era of taking these young freshmen and trying to play against older players is over. Like it, he did, a, I think he did a phenomenal job with these guys all year, getting them to be as successful as they were. You can see. They're playing against grown men. The guys on Kentucky will be far better pros than any of these guys on Oakland or any of these guys in the tournament. But they're not as good college basketball players. It's a, at this point in their career, they're not as disciplined yet as the guys from Oakland. And it's not Kyle's fault. It's they're 18 years old, and they're in this era where everyone's telling them how great they are. Just show up in college, and you're going to win. It doesn't happen that way. And the more the guys stay in college because of NIL, it's going to be tougher for young teams like this to be successful. He makes a lot of good points there, uh, and and I agree with what he's saying. I think it's kind of been proven, right? I mean, Kentucky's gone through that model of the majority of our team is going to be the five-star freshman. And you've got a lot of talent. I mean, it's a great take. It's been happening probably for 15 years now. Um, But now it's it's really hit its apex, and you have so many of the best young players going G League or getting a bag to go to a college that's not going to compete for a championship, you know? So that young talent that Cal was using to compete against the veteran teams, and even not perfectly in his heyday, you know? Um is now more diluted. He he just can't aggregate enough of it there for himself on campus. Yeah, man. Uh, and when it comes to the tournament too, like so much of it is about like having the the experience. Unless you're, I mean, he had a time where they were they were going up against a lot more teams that were young like them, and then their talent was usually just better. Yeah, the, the uh, one but, and done era definitely was a quick thing. But now, I mean, you see all these all these mistakes late in the game, knowing when to do certain things, and and having the composure and some of this stuff. Like it, the the pressure is super super high when you have guys that have been there before, and now they're th- they've been playing together for three years, four years. It's different than a bunch of guys that just got together. They've played one season together, and they've never been in moments like this before. Well, we also have a pretty cool story here, and this is uh, your buddy Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Pat McAfee had him on the show yesterday, and he, he was name? he was in full uniform. I don't even know his real name, uh, Robbie Avila. So that's that's his actual name, but we go with Kareem Abdul Jabbar around these parts. But yes, yeah, the truffle shuffle. Yeah, he shouldn't answer to anything other than Kareem. Just Kareem, six foot ten, two hundred forty pound center, average seventeen points, four assists. There's seven no boards. way he's a pound under two seventy. Yeah, Unless there's just no muscle how, on that. Be generous, you know. That might just possible. be the school just giving him a little there's bit of love. Of these guys. Shot 53.8% from the field, just under 40% from three this year. He's been amazing. But Pat McAfee said, hey, I feel for you, Indiana State. Uh, You should have been in the tournament over a team like Virginia. So he's going to try and make it right. He said, I'm going to offer you guys a $150,000 NIL deal to the Sycamores, but it's contingent on you must win the NIT tournament. So over the next 14 days, there's 150 k on the line for Indiana State and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar if they can cut down the nets, the NIT. Who put that deal together I love for that. McAfee. McAfee. It wow. kind of goes back to his, his – he always tries – those kids always try field goals, 
right? When you giving kids, have you always see that yes. on I don't college know. game day. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't Anybody think he, end up making a kick? Heck no. Uh, hey, may, they, maybe somebody. One at the end? I don't think so. I just know Gronk always misses his Super Bowl kicks. On purpose. He's shanking those things. He got Herb Street kind of holding for you, and he's trying to do his best. Well, they're kicking it like the a dog in, gets in the way sometimes. Lot. The dog always the dog. gets in the way sometimes. <laughs> oh, you shut up. You bite your tongue over there, dog hater. I've seen one of the weirdest dog trends in all of the world oh, that we're going to have to discuss at some point. Okay. This is big news, though. Uh, I think the I golf dogs. world and the cinema world is very excited to hear that Adam Sandler has confirmed there is going to Let's be a freaking go. Happy Gilmore Say 2. Yes! Biggest dub. Hitting theaters in the summer of 2026. The tour, the <laughs> PGA Tour official Twitter announced this, too. Like, people are losing their minds. No, that's the ball sack. Is that's, it the ball that's, sack? That's, I'm telling you, they, they have built this oh, PGA is. Tour account to look just like... A real respectable, the ball credible. PGA Tour this one. is the ball sack PGA Tour. That's yes. why I don't know oh, if the in. Ball sack? I don't know. If, I, no, I, no, no. I think this is real though. He has been talking about this for a long time, and him and uh, Neil McDonald is that his name? Yeah, McDonald has some quotes where basically he just bumped into Adam Sandler in the last couple of weeks, and Sandler said, "Hey, McDonald, you're gonna love this, yeah. bro." And he showed him the the initial copy, the initial first draft been of working the script. On the scripts. And he's like, "Yeah, this is gonna be awesome." So I don't know if we have like an in theaters like when this thing's we don't, coming we don't, out. We don't have a date. Yeah. but they're eyeing summer of. 2026 as of now. So that's that's, that's going to be pretty awesome. 2026? 2020, well, it takes a while. you got to film this thing. It's gonna, Pinky Blinders it's is having a movie, time. by the way. Yes, I know. Killian Murphy's coming back. Yeah. He's going to be Tommy Shelby yeah. in the Peaky Blinders movie, which is going to be awesome. Uh, well, fun. I see this confirmed on Variety and stuff. It's a story. Yeah, you know? it's real. It, it, it did the, happen. The the only the only reason this kind of stinks is uh, Chubbs will not be part of the oh, right. Right. Of course, that's the that's great Carl Weathers. Carl Weathers I'm sure they'll R. make a... Son of Chubbs. They'll have a funny. We'll I'm sure Michael, they'll have a funny storyline. Michael Jordan, Jordan son of Chubbs, played yeah, Creed's Let's son. Call it Chubbs. Yeah, that's perfect. They call yeah. You just, you Dude, that's gonna in. happen. Yeah, that's gotta happen. Yeah, Michael yeah. B. Jordan can yeah. play his son in this, son of just Chubbs. like he just played Creed's son. I think this is perfect. Son of Chubbs. He I can love tell that. the story about his dad. How you know he lost the arm and he's all this. He's, the last thing I want to uh, bring wow. your attention here in the mix. It's just the part. hand. It wasn't the full arm. So it's gonna be Gilmore coaching B. Jordan. Oh yeah, is that it? That'd be awesome. There you go. That would be pretty. Or else he's got to be on the senior tour. You know, and the senior tour definitely has been a rumor as maybe a, a way that they could do this too. But either way, I'm is the guy for this. shooter McGavern coming back. Yeah, that, yeah, 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 that's yeah. Neil McDonald. Okay, uh, there's been Pay a sunken ship <laughs> with the most valuable treasure. I didn't here. know his real I, name. I didn't know I'd get that Who, excited uh, about it. No, he's just he, yeah, he's, too, dude. he's shooter. Yeah. This is gonna be awesome. Okay, last thing here before we reach you back the day. There's a sunken the ship grandma. with the most valuable treasure <laughs> in the that? history of humanity that is set to be right. raised as soon as next month. So if you're into chips. And treasure, which I am a little bit. This is going to be awesome. This is in uh, Colombia. Throw it in the ocean. It's got seventeen billion dollars in treasure, Brian. You yeah, would dude. be interested in this. Matthew McConaughey's Fool's Gold movie. Seventeen billion dollars in treasure. What that is they're this? Going a Spanish out galleon? Of the ocean. Would we? Yeah, find? centuries after a Spanish galleon ship sunk in the Colombian waters, oh. and a nearly decade after it was initially discovered. The shipwreck, with an estimated $17 billion worth of its treasure on board, oh. is set to be raised next month. It's a 150-foot-long, 64-gun, three-masted galleon ship, and uh, they're going to raise this thing up. I'm excited to see cool. what the hell is watch on this bad Watch these Somali boy. pirates. you got to watch that, those that's what That's what made, made us late for G-Bag of the Day is a pirate story, Wolchuk. Damn right. People love pirates. Are you kidding me? Here's Lucius and the Pimp Cup with a real it's treasure. Right. It's the best right. idea. It's all right. Hey. I would have been that Brian interrupting every two seconds. We'd have been out of here 29. It's your fault. You can't fight through things. I'm fighting through the whole day of five hours. Hi, Lucius. We got the water burning still, man. At the red light. <laughs> hey, man, so, uh. Jeez. How you guys doing? You're good. Awesome. All right. How's your Friday? <laughs> it was fun. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I can't say what I want to say. I Bring just it. can't say. No, I can't. I really can't. Uh, all right, let's see. Let's see here. Uh, hey, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, didn't the Chub, first Chubbs die? Yeah, already? he did. He did. He did. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, just making sure I ain't out of the loop. All right, it's day three for this G bag of the day winner. L.A. City Council meeting. Lady goes off on the whole city council. She do it with the song. When I clarify that you can't dictate 
whether or not people boo or hiss if people are clapping and hooting and hollering. So this is That's not on the right. agenda. Please oh, it, stick oh, to the not, agenda. Oh, it's not. Oh, thanks items. for reminding me, Grover. Or you can move on to general public comment. Sure. Um, so mm -hmm. shout out to Smoke and Scan. Shout out DJ Paul general Gregorian. This is Taylor, Taylor Swift on the track. <laughs> now we all know what's up. Every city council member is corrupt. Kevin's racist. None of y'all give a f Broke your promises when y'all just gave it up, up, up. Can't you see Lex what Miller. these people do? Lie and break the rules in plain view, babe. Grifting is Nithya Raman's energy. It's a Hollywood thing. She's filthy rich, baby. Council chamber bully politicians. Staff are be in trouble after snitching. Always switching sides, trading votes, and then some. Ooh, these politicians think we're so dumb. Now we all know what's up. Every city council member is corrupt. Kevin's racist, none of y'all give a f Broke your promises when y'all just gave it up, up, up. Big f you to Kevin DeLeon, big f you to Nathia Raman, big f you to Marquise, big f you to Bob, big f you to Grove, big shout out to Smoke and Scan, and Let's go. Free Palestine. Two time champ, three time champ, three. Yeah, that was a three time right there. See if you guys had anything to say. Let me do this again. <laughs> <laughs> Point taken, sir. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right, let's see right here, fellas. This is Friday. We made it yet. Yeah, we made it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's go to WFAA TV. Big time news crush right here. Cynthia Isigisi Isigisi Geddes. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. She's got some great classic videos on there. I think she got the Marvel Worlds mixed up one time before. <laughs> she put Spider-Man in the wrong universe. Oh, no. Uh, some guy climbed Mount Everest, and she's like, well, but he's gay. I mean, he's blind. <laughs> my God. Oh, my. oh. Oops. I mean, he's blind? <laughs> he's blind. Slow down, Donald Sterling. <laughs> this is my girl right here, though. I love Cynthia Isigeta-ass. And I say that uh, respect to Mr. Mr. Isigeta-ass out here. <laughs> I say that respect to you, sir. I do. You got you one, buddy. Uh, she's always good for one, like I said. Check this out on the news. WFAA TV. You ever see those videos that say, wait for it? Yeah. yeah. This is a wait for it situation. A woman is alive tonight thanks to a Mansfield police officer who saved her from choking behind the wheel. Oh my God. Yeah, you know, our, our executive producer, incredible. Tiffany Johnson, just uh, so insensitive. She was laughing, saying, you know, how embarrassing it would be to like have to be saved from just your chewing gum. I would and be I, happy to be laughed at and be I, saved. I, I couldn't believe that. That's <laughs> Tiffany Johnson. I, I just wow. couldn't believe what she said. Well, I choked. Mm -hmm. I was choking on a banana a couple of years ago. Remember I told you? Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> I kid you not. Captain Awesome right. saved my life. <laughs> Seriously. All right. I'm, uh, I'm <laughs> dead. I mean, I, 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 folks, I couldn't make this up if I had to. 67 degrees right now in oh. Denton. Yeah. You get back to the play by play. Yeah, uh, just, uh, just get back to painting that picture. Slide on out of this one. <laughs> I was chucking on a banana. <laughs> Remember? Remember I told you about that one, guys? Remember? Chucking on that banana. Shout out that. Captain Sergeant Hero for saving me. <laughs> I love you, Cynthia. I say that respectfully. It's a joke. Uh, what else we got? Oh, this is not one, but I got to get it out the way because I won't be here next week. There's a kid that did like the, the news in Michigan. You, know, you do like a little guest spot, come on there, show you how to do the, be like a meteorologist or something if you're interested. In that time, he took shots at his grandpa. <laughs> is there anybody you want to give a shout out to this morning? Okay, I would like to give a shout out to my mom, uh huh, my nana, my grandma, and my grandpa. And grandpa, hot and wetty. I'm telling you, bro, <laughs> the, hot, the hot and wetty was funny. <laughs> yeah. 